Wednesday afternoon, I got a message on my cell phone from Ellen Weiss, who's the head of news at NPR, asking me to call. When I called back, she said, what did you say? What did you mean to say? And I said, I said what I meant to say, which is that it's an honest experience that when I'm in an airport and I see people who are in Muslim garb, who identify themselves first and foremost as Muslims, I do a double take. I have a moment of anxiety or fear, given what happened on 9-11. That's just a reality. And uh, she went on to say, well, that crosses the line. And I said, what line is that? And uh, she, she went on to su somehow suggest that I had made a bigoted statement. And I said, it's not a bigoted statement. I, in fact, in the course of this conversation with Bill O'Reilly, said that we have, as Americans, an obligation to be careful to protect the constitutional rights of everyone in the country and to make sure we don't have any outbreak of bigotry. But that there's a reality. You cannot ignore what happened on 9-11 and you cannot ignore the connection to Islamic radicalism and you can't ignore the fact of what was has been even recently said in court with regard to this is the first drop of blood in a Muslim war in America and then she said you know this has been decided up the chain I said you mean I don't even get the chance to come in and we do this eyeball to eyeball person to person have a conversation I've been there for more than 10 years we don't have that chance to have a conversation about this and she said there's nothing you can say that will change my mind this has been decided above me and we're terminating your contract. This is the situation. And uh, we've got, you know, further news from this that uh, now that Ron, Ron Williams has been fired or released from his contract from a position at uh, National Public Radio, Republicans Sarah Palin, Mike Huckabee and others are calling for National Public Radio to be destripped of public funding. They received some money from the government for their programming uh, in response to the termination of their friend and contributor, a fellow contributor, uh, they are saying that at a time when our country is in dangerous debt and looking for areas of federal spending to cut, I think we found a good candidate for defunding. And Sarah Palin wrote on her Facebook wall as uh, I'm, I'm not. No, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to quote uh, what she said. But at any rate, most uh, pr uh, conservative contributors are saying that, yeah, we have to be honest about the Islamic jihadist threat. Juan Williams in his statements, said that I clutch the pearls when, <laughs> when I see a Muslim and when they identify themselves openly as Muslims, I get a little nervous. I get some pause. I'm scared. Okay, let's talk about this seriously now. I am less angry and upset about what was said. I think it was an honest reflection. And I think that, uh, unfortunately, uh, there is a lot of taking people to task for their honesty, sincere honesty. And I don't really think that Mr. Williams was trying to be bigoted here. Uh, I think guess that's the scary part. <laughs> when you're being bigoted and you don't know it, I'm less upset about the statements that were made than I am about the statement being made. And the statement having a reflection of the truth. This is a way that a lot of America feels about many of us in fearless Muslim America. And this is unfortunate. And if you take a look at one of the uh, points regarding this statement, he said in his statement, I feel some type of trepidation when I see someone who identify themselves first and foremost as Muslim. In Muslim garb. What does that say to us? The, the undercurrent within that statement is that I will not cease to be afraid of you unless you let go of some of who you are. And it's a, such an absurd and, and, and such a an disjointed statement. Why is, do I say that? Because if you look at the 9-11 hijackers, the people who hijack planes, they go out of their way to be not noticed as Muslims. They go out of their way to appear as though they are just like everybody else. The people who go and attack people and, and uh, perform these horrendous terrorist acts, they are entrenched into the society such to the fact that their appearance is unnoticed. They don't want to be noticed. 
for their Islamic garb. So they shave their beards and they try to appear as Westerners as much as they can. So this is the absurd part that hurts. And just think about our Muslim women. Day in and day out, the Muslim man can walk amongst his American counterparts unnoticed to some degree. You know, some of us, you know, the beard is so beefy <laughs> and, you know, the, the swarthy, uh, you know, type uh, appearance that people automatically jump to a conclusion, even though you may be dressed as a typical Westerner. However, our Muslim women cannot escape. They can't get away. And many of us who choose to uh, dress in a typical standard Islamic dress, we can't get away. So this is a huge problem within our society. And Allah has asked us to dress this way. This is an order from our Lord that we're trying to obey here. So when you ask us to de-Islamize ourselves, to make, to strip ourselves of our religious identity of dress. When Europeans call us to abandon Islamic dress and to take classes on how to be a proper European, this is in essence calling us to leave some of who we are. And there is no religion on the face of the earth that is being asked to change their mode of dress, except us. It's a problem, and there's no solution to it, except for people like you and I, who are level-headed, who got this stuff together, to sit down and to reach mutual understanding that I am who I am, you are who you are, I'm not trying to change you, so don't try to change me. Brothers and sisters, what are we going to do? We just have to do our best and try to understand each other a little bit better. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, don't go anywhere. Stay right there. American Muslims Today is coming right back. America's premier, premier, premier. Islamic radio broadcast program. Too big to fail. 